Before we begin the eighth project, make sure you've downloaded the Concerts Print 18 zip file, and when you uncompress it, add your name to the Concert folder that's created, and then place it inside of the folder with your name on it. Also, we need to make sure the appropriate fonts are installed. For this project, you'll need to install ATC Garnet and ATC Onyx. Remember, to install a font, you can simply select both of the fonts, double-click on them, this will open up FontBook. You say install font, and if they've already been installed on your computer, you may get this warning. If this does come up, you can simply close it out and continue on. Let's do the same for Onyx. Select all of the fonts, double click on them, choose install font, and in this case this was the first time so I've got no other warnings. We can then close this out. If you look inside of the folder that we just created, the concert folder. This will have all of the information for building out this concert poster. We're going to talk about including some text and how to break it up. We're going to have a vector outline of a guitar, a guitar photograph, and also another illustrator file and a pathway that we'll use later on. So to get started, let's jump into InDesign. We'll go up to File and New and create a new document. Now the size of our document needs to be letter size, so we'll choose print and make sure letter is selected. The name of our document is going to be poster. Be sure to add your name at the end of it as well. We'll set our units to be inches. The orientation needs to be landscape, so make sure your width is set to 11 and your height is 8.5. We're only going to be working on one page and we're going to uncheck the facing pages and the primary text frame as well. We need to give it a margin setting on all sides, so choose margins, make sure the link is checked on, and then type in 0.25 and give it a quarter inch margin on all sides. Let's do the same thing for the bleed. For the bleed settings, make sure the link is checked on, and then add 0.25. When you hit tab, this will place a, half, a quarter of an inch on all sides of it. Now when we say create, this will give us our new document. The next thing we want to do is to define some custom color swatches. If you don't see your swatches panel open on the left hand side, go to Window, down to Color, and choose Swatches. And inside the swatches panel, you've got some predefined, pre-made color swatches. If you ever need to change any of these colors, simply double click on the swatch icon. So I'm going to double click on the blue one. And this will bring up the swatch options for that color. Let's change this color to more of a purplish blue. Let's give it a cyan value of 70, a magenta of 80, and a yellow and black value of 0. Once you're finished, you can say OK. And you can see how that is changed up. Let's do the same thing for the red. Double click on the red color swatch. Set the cyan value of 0, a magenta value, and a yellow value of 100, and a black value of 10. When you say OK, the red is now changed. If you ever need to delete away a swatch, for instance, let's delete away the green one. Select the swatch and then click and drag it down to the trash can at the very bottom of this panel. If you ever need to create your own custom swatch from scratch, you can click on the top left right hand corner, choose New Color Swatch, and from this menu you can type in the values that you want. Let's make a rich black, so we'll give it a cyan of zero, magenta of 40, a yellow of 0, and a black of 100. Also, make sure that Add to CC Library is unchecked. Now we can say Add, and this new color swatch has been added to the bottom of our panel. Let's also add a spot color. Change your color type from Process to Spot. Change your color mode from CMYK. Let's choose the metallic coated versions. From here you can get all of your different Pantone metallic colors and so we'll choose or search for 8005C. With this swatch selected you can add that one as well. It's been added to the bottom. You can see it's got a new icon now of a spot inside of it. So we can say done and see that that's now been created. This is a good time to go through and save our document. So let's go to File and Save. Since this is the first time I've saved my document, make sure you've got the correct folder selected. It's inside of the folder with your name on it and inside of the concert folder. 
Your document should have your name on it, and we're going to save it as a regular InDesign file. We'll hit Save and Continue. Now let's give our document a background. If we go back to our swatches panel, let's bring the fill color swatch to the foreground and select the new rich black that we created. Then bring your stroke color swatch to the foreground and choose none. We're going to fill in the background with a solid black rectangle. If you go over to your tool panel, you can find the regular rectangle tool. If you don't see it, it could be hiding underneath the ellipse or polygon tool. But with the rectangle tool selected, click at the top right, excuse me, top left most bleed edge and drag it to the bottom right most bleed edge, going from bleed edge to bleed edge. Since we don't want to move this background around, we need to open up our layers panel. Then we can open up layer one and let's lock down this rectangle by clicking right here next to the eyeball and that will lock it down so it doesn't get moved around. Now let's create another rectangle inside of it. For this new rectangle, I want to give it a blue outline. So select the stroke color in your swatches and select what the book calls the new blue. In our case, it actually looks a little bit more purple. You can then click and drag and create another rectangle anywhere on the inside of it. And let's change our stroke width to be six point. If you go up to the very top, you can increase that to be six, and now it gets nice and thicker so we can see it. To give it the exact placement and dimensions, go to the top left-hand corner, set your X value to be negative 0.25, Y value of one, and a width of 11 and a half, and a height of six and a half. Finally, let's return back to our layers panel and we want to turn off visibility for this very back rectangle. So clicking on this will turn that off so that we only see the new rectangle that we created on top of it. This is a good saving point, so let's go to File and Save and continue on. Now the process to make a gradient color is similar to making a regular swatch. If you go to the top of your swatches panel, this time choose New Gradient Swatch. And this will bring up our gradient swatch options. Click on the white gradient swatch at the very uh, left side of your gradient ramp and let's change our type from, or excuse me, stop color from CMYK to swatches so that we can use the new swatches that we created. This white one selected, click on the new purplish blue that we created and that'll add it there. We can click on the black one on the far right and let's choose the new red that we created. So this will go from the blue, purple, to red. We'll give it the name of blue to red. Then we'll say OK. And this will add the new gradient at the bottom of our swatches panel. If you don't already have the rectangle selected, you can use your selection tool and click on the rectangle. Let's bring our fill color to the front. Let's apply that new gradient to it. And you can see where I've already applied the gradient to the swatch value as well. So, but if you haven't, choose the swatch value. Choose blue to red as the swatch value. But we want the stroke to be going the opposite direction. So to change the direction that the gradient is going, let's open up our gradient panel. If you don't see it, you can go to Window, down to Color, and choose Gradient. And within this gradient panel, Let's change our angle from 0 to 180. When we hit return, now you can see that the gradient on the stroke around our rectangle is going the opposite of the gradient that we have for the fill color. Since we're not going to need our gradient or swatches anymore, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to put my swatches back over here off to the side. If you want to preview what this looks like, look at the very bottom of your tool panel. and You can see there are different view modes. When you click on it, choose Preview, and this will show you what it will look like once it's printed and cropped off to the bleed. To go back to normal mode, go back to the bottom of your tool panel, click on it, and choose Normal, and go back to normal mode. Now let's create an irregular graphics frame. Select the new gradient rectangle that we've created. Let's go to File, down to Place. Let's navigate to our Concert folder and choose the Guitar Outline. Also, open or check on Show Import Options. And when you say Open, you can see all of the options for this particular graphic. 
Notice that it says place PDF, even though it's an Adobe Illustrator file. And for this purpose, everything should be okay. Crop to options, make sure art is selected, then you can say okay. And you can see it's now been placed inside of the frame that we have. The book is actually going to ask you to undo this. We want to place it inside of its own frame. So let's go to edit and undo replace. And notice that it will follow your cursor until you click outside of the area and place it inside of its own frame. If you accidentally click inside of the rectangle, then you'll need to go to edit and undo that and then click outside of the rectangle so that it's placed inside of its own frame. Now we can give it a exact coordinates. At the very top with it selected, choose 0.25 for the X and 4.75 for the Y value. This will place it exactly where it needs to be on our frame. Now since this is a vector form, we can locate or uh, open up the vector object by going to our clipping path options. Let's go to Object, down to Clipping Path, and choose Options. With these options selected, change your type to Detect Edges. If we turn on Preview, this will show you where all of these vector points would be on your, your individual frame. We can say OK. Now to convert these vector points to an actual working frame, let's go back up to Object, down to the Clipping Path, and let's convert our clipping path to a frame. Now that path has been converted to a frame that's the shape of the guitar and it's got the guitar inside of it. So to get rid of the black guitar, choose your direct selection tool, click once inside of the area, and then hit your delete key to delete it away. You should be left with the outline of your guitar frame that has an X going through it. Now let's choose our regular black arrow tool and click once on the guitar frame to select it and let's place a picture inside of it. With it selected, go to File and Place and let's choose the Guitar JPEG. We can uncheck Show Import Options and say Open. And you can see that JPEG is now placed inside of the irregular guitar shape. This is a good point to save, so let's go to File and Save and continue to the next part. Now let's add another image to our gradient rectangle and change up its transparency. So with your black arrow, click on the gradient rectangle that we created in the background. And to change the, uh, the content type for this one, let's go to Object, down to Content, and change it to Graphic. This will give it a blue X going through your, your rectangle. Now with it still selected, we can go to File and Place and let's place that same guitar JPEG. Do make sure replace selected item is checked on. So when we say open, this will place it right on top of inside of that rectangle. However, now you can see that the two images don't exactly align up perfectly. So with our black arrow selection tool, click once on the guitar image to select it, and then carefully click on the content grabber circle right in the center of it. This will select the image uh, that's inside of your guitar picture, so it's selected the content inside of it. Now you can go up to the control panel options and type in an exact X and Y location. So for X, we're going to choose negative 0.75 and a Y value of negative 4.5. When you hit return, this will move it up and over into the correct position. To get out of the contents for this one, hit the escape key on your keyboard. This will go back to the regular uh, shape of the outline of your, your guitar. Now let's give your guitar a drop shadow. With the guitar still selected, go up to the very top and choose the drop shadow effect next, next to the effects button. When you click on it, you can see a default drop shadow will be added to the outline of your frame. If you want to change up how these effects uh, will, will look on your page, we can go to Window, down to Effects, and this will open up our Effects panel. With the object still selected, you can double click on the Effects button on the very far right hand side. This will open up the Effects options for this particular drop shadow. 
Let's change the color uh, in the blending mode from black to the new bluish purple that we created. When you say OK, you can even turn on preview and get a preview of what that new purple will look like. And once we're done, we can say OK to apply that change. With that done, now we can choose our direct selection tool, the white arrow, and click on the inside of the graphic inside of your, your gradient text frame at the very back. Notice that this automatically selects the correct image that's inside of the content of your frame. So with this picture selected, if we return to our effects panel, change its blending mode from normal to multiply. You can see it gets much darker and it picks up on the colors of the gradient that's behind it. Let's also click on the little FX button at the bottom of our panel. Then choose the very last option of Gradient Feather. And under the Gradient Stops, click this last icon to reverse out the black and white positions of your gradient ramp. And let's set the angle of this to be 90 degrees. Finally, we're going to choose the black gradient stop. And let's bring it in to be a location of about 85%. Right about there is OK. We can say OK to apply the changes. And let's click away to deselect the frame. And I'll close out the effects so that we can see exactly the effect that it's been created. This is a good time to save, so let's go to File and Save and continue on. The final thing we're going to do for this stage is to generate a QR code at the bottom left hand corner. Let's go back to our toolbox and select the Rectangle Frame tool, then click and drag and create a rectangle pretty much anywhere on your page. Once it's still created and still selected, let's type in the exact coordinates and dimensions. So at the top left hand corner, type in 0.25 for the X coordinate, 7.375 for the Y coordinate, and 0.8 for both the height and the width of the box. This will place it nice and small down at the bottom left hand corner. With it still selected, we can also go to our fill color swatch at the top. Let's set the fill color to be paper. Swap over to the stroke color. Let's let that be the new purplish blue that we created. And let's change the width of that stroke to be three points. So you should have a rectangle that looks like this. To generate the QR code, with the box still selected, go to Object, down to Generate QR Code. Let's change the type of it to be a web hyperlink, and then type in the URL of www.Weston Summer Concert Series. .com. When we choose color, we can choose the new dark or uh, rich black that we created. We'll say OK to that. And you can see the QR code has been added inside of that particular frame. Again, this is a good point to save and continue on to the next stage.